While working on a video, I'm painting the engine compartment. I noticed some damage to the unibody structure on this AMC AMX. So instead, today, we're going to do a video on pulling that. Here's a shot of the driver's side, and you can see this is straight and closed, and this is all nice and flat and straight. Here's a shot of the damage side. That gap is way too wide. It needs to be nice and tight, pinched right together. Again, back to the good side. You can see this is somewhat flat. This is all nice and square. This is level. It dips down a little bit right here, but generally it's pretty straight. And now to the damage side. This is the originally the thing that, that got me looking. There's a real wrinkle right there in the sheet metal. This is all dented up. This is creased a little bit too much. This dips down and there's a big bulge here in the sheet metal. You can see that this side sort of dips down a little bit, so we'll take a measurement. It should be the same from here to here as it is from here to here. So this should be sort of the good measurement. So let's take a look at that. And that is 37 and a quarter. And this is 36. So we need to bring this little bolt out to about right there. It needs to come up this way about an inch. And now with the tram gauge, you can see from bolt to bolt what that looks like. And then right there, it's missing that bolt. So we're going to pull this to this point. The frame machine we'll be using is called an L-Dozer type frame machine, and you can get them online. This one is Champ. They don't make it anymore, but they do make other ones just like it. The front of the car is chained down. I have it through the engine mounts right there. This chain right here is chained back here with a come along. So it goes from there, behind here, through with the come along, and attached to the other side of this ramp. And then this one goes around the engine mount, comes down, goes around the ramp, comes up, and connects right here. So it's chained to this ramp. The whole car is basically chained to this ramp so that it doesn't go that way when we pull it. Here's a shot from the back side. Sometimes you have to get a little creative, and we're using a scissors jack here to tighten the chain up so that when we start pulling, the car doesn't move that way at all. And usually you'd use a chain binder. It would hook here and here, and then you could screw it tight. Here's one last shot from up above. We have it coming through here and hooked over there, and both of those are chained to the ramp on that side. So now when I step on the pedal, that will pull and that will release. And the oil's a little cold right now, so it pumps a little slow. And just for a little extra help, we're going to add a port of power. And that's clamped up there to the pinch. Well, we're just going to push against that as we pull. So we'll give it a go. We're going to be hitting that wrinkle while we're pulling this way. We might even need some heat.
case you're wondering, as the arm pulls back that way, it pushes this way against this wooden block, which presses against this ramp. The other end of the frame machine is clamped to the ramp so that it doesn't move side to side. Here's a shot from further away so you can get the whole picture. Before we pull any more, I noticed a little crack. It was rusty here. This is the battery tray, so I'm going to weld that up. We'll start welding with low heat at first because this metal is a bit thin. Once I get it firmed up, we'll move it up and weld it nice and solid. I keep blowing through, so I'm going to get a little piece of metal to put in there. Before shutting the welder off, I'm going to weld a piece right here to pull from it.
as we keep knocking these high spots or crinkles down, we'll add a little more pressure. Now we'll try one more thing, putting a jack under here. And then popping down over there. Now we can measure. So from that bolt to this one, that should be the same as that. And we are about a quarter inch off. So I think I'll just I'll pull from right here and then put the porta power in between here one more time. After making a few adjustments to square it up, like putting the porta power here, pressing up right here, and pounding down over there, we'll take one last measurement. We should be right on. And that's good. Here's a close up from the top. That gap is closed up. And a shot of the other side. I hope you enjoyed this video on squaring up a core support with a dozer type frame machine. If you did and you'd like to get my latest videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.